In 2018, I was propelled to leave my software sales job because I had friends of mine that wanted to get into the Airbnb short-term rental game. I knew by getting a few places for them that we would manage, we'd have enough money to pay my salary. We had eight or so places between ours and a couple we were managing when I left my job. And by the end of 2019, we had over 200 under management. Welcome to the next generation of hospitality entrepreneurs, a special podcast series brought to you by Behind the Stays. My name is Zach Buzicruz, and I'm the co-founder of Spontaneous and the host of the Behind the Stays podcast. And in this episode, you'll meet Ben Wolf, the co-founder of Onera, a collection of some of the most unique and bespoke stays that we've ever seen, located just 90 minutes outside of Austin, Texas. I'm Ben Wolf, and I'm the co-founder of Onera. We're trying to create an enchanting escape for our guests. They come here, they feel like they're transported into almost a new universe. They have their own little private bubble, this unique, inspiring unit that they're staying in. Onera actually means dream in Greek, so there's this element of they're in a little bit of a dream fantasy world. I mean, when I was a kid, I was interested in like architecture and design. I never really did a whole lot with it was always interested in real estate. I always felt like I didn't know what. I didn't know what I was gonna start. And I always had this sense, I wasn't creative enough, right? I don't, I don't have like the idea. Come to find out, like all these different experiences that I've had have led me to now finally find something that I'm passionate about, that our customers seem to really love. I've had folks ask me before, how did I leave McKinsey or how did I leave, you know, my high paying software sales job? And I've always kind of had this philosophy of, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? I'll go get a job. You know, I mean, that's like, if it doesn't work out, I will go get another job. I was actually on my first team offsite with our now 20 person team in the Philippines. We had this amazing villa in Boracay, the best beach in the Philippines and we were having a great time. This was March 2020, so COVID was a thing, but nobody knew how big of a thing yet. We get there, Manila Airport gets shut down, and then the US closed borders to Europe, and all of our reservations got canceled, like almost the entire portfolio. We figured out a way to navigate through that one, worked with landlords to pay half rent or whatever we could do to kind of get by and we salvaged it, we're able to kind of break even. And then things started to come back and that business is okay, but it really pushed me in this direction of alternative stays, unique stays. I was already interested in it before COVID hit, but we were making good money with the urban STRs, so I may have never been pushed to do it if it wasn't for COVID. My now partner in the experiential hospitality growth firm, Jesse, has a compound in Jackson. Joshua Tree with a bus, an Airstream, a, a plane that's no longer active. It's just kind of like an art piece. He had all these kind of unique accommodations and he showed me his calendar and the numbers he was doing and it was just mind blowing. Later that year, after I got married, I did a road trip around the Southwestern US. I actually borrowed Jesse's RV. It was amazing, I loved it. Waking up in those places, being able to reconnect to nature and, and you know reconnect with my wife and myself in a different way. However, I will say RV life has its challenges. I mean, you're basically, you know, you have a car pulling a house that's constantly going through an earthquake essentially. So I really started to have this idea of how do we create a frictionless experience in beautiful, unique accommodations that really highlight the local landscape, but feel like the comforts of home and then some. In addition to that, I looked around at the landscape and the competitors were under canvas. I think maybe AutoCamp was pretty early, pretty basic, even like mid to lower tier options. I mean, under canvas doesn't even have AC, right? I mean, it's a different offering. It's great for certain folks, but our clientele at Onero wants AC and, and heat, you know, when it's, when it's 20 degrees out. On Behind the Stays, we feature some of the most incredible Airbnbs from around the world, like these spyglass, treehouse, and container homes built by some of the most innovative people in real estate and hospitality. But what if I told you you could build a stunning, unique escape without needing to know a thing about how to design or build a short-term rental? Well, friends, you can when you partner with our friends at Den. You've likely seen them all over Instagram or perhaps even on the cover of Dwell Magazine. But in the off chance that you haven't, Den creates high quality design-minded cabins that help bring the outdoors in. 
Some of the most wishlisted cabins on Airbnb and the most followed A-frames on Instagram use Den Designs. So it brings me great joy to tell you all that we've partnered with Den to give you an exclusive discount. You can use the discount code BTS50, that's BTS as in behind the stays five zero, at checkout to get 50% off any of their digital designs. I'll be back to tell you a little bit more about Den in just a few minutes, but for now, open up a new tab, go to denoutdoors.com and start browsing their inventory of digital designs. Getting financing in 2020 was a challenge, right? Hospitality was not the darling of the financing world during COVID when travel came to a halt. I'm, I'm, I'm very persistent. It's probably one of my uh, one of my superpowers is persistence without pissing people off. Highly recommend community banks. I mean, they understand the market. They're willing to take a little more of a risk. They want to be a part of a project that's going to be groundbreaking and super exciting for whatever city they're in. So I talked to 20 local banks, probably got like one or two maybes and one guy that loved it. And I knew it was going to go to bat for me. And that was Sonora Bank, actually. And, and they were great. I identified three markets in this sort of central Texas, close to Austin, that, that I really liked. And the numbers were really strong. The first piece of land I found actually I liked, kind of dragged my feet in it a little bit and lost it. That was the last time I let that happen. I had another place actually in Dripping Springs, another one of these markets that, that we liked in Central Texas. The listing agent and the seller both said, no restrictions, you're all good, no problem. $10,000 into due diligence and we come to find out there are deed restrictions and we can't do what we want to do. It was an expensive lesson, but one that you know I never made that mistake again. There was a couple higher end tree houses in Fredericksburg, but very mom and pop, super small, bespoke, and they were doing, you know, 100, 120, $150,000 a year. So I could point to those and say, hey, there's a lot of disposable income coming to Fredericksburg. People want to spend money, and the hotel and hospitality inventory is very minimal on the higher end side. I mean, Fredericksburg, it's not even just unique stays. Like there's, there's, I don't think there's a single four or five star hotel in Fredericksburg. I was away, I was just getting home from a trip that day and it came through maybe even on the flight. I saw this piece of land pop up super close to Main Street, which was one thing I was looking for. It's a big attraction here and it still looked very wooded and kind of untouched. And it was also lining Barron's Creek, which is like the main water tributary that, that runs through Fredericksburg. And I saw it, the price was right. I, you know, ran out here the next day and got it under contract basically day of. I knew we were gonna be the coolest game in town in Fredericksburg and it was already kind of a hot market. So part of the strategy was be the best and they will come. I wanted to push the envelope, really go big in terms of unique and novel. I wanted to see what people would be willing to pay and what would really blow them away. I wanted something that was gonna blow me away. If it didn't blow me away, then it wasn't gonna blow away anybody else was, was my view. There was also an element of just wanting to test a number of different things. I mean, it's in my nature to kind of test and see what works and kind of iterate from there. So we wanted to try soft-sided, we wanted to try hard-sided, we wanted to try these incredible super high-end tree houses, and basically wanted to see what was going to have the highest ADR occupancy, what was going to be the, the kind of easiest to build and replicate, what was going to be the sort of best operationally. There's a whole bunch of different factors. When, I, when we were underwriting, when we were doing projections for Onera Fredericksburg, I mean, I had us in the neighborhood of somewhere around four, 450 to $500 per night and somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 to 90% occupancy. When we did initial projections on the initial nine units we had, the projections were in the neighborhood of 1.2 to 1.3 million. I mean, I believe that. There was a lot of folks who, who thought that was kind of crazy high and we actually did 1.4 million last year in our first year. This year, we're on track to do 1.7 million. Again, we added a few units, so that helped. Our best performing units are doing north of $200,000 a year. A number of the other units are in the 140 to 170K per year. And our newest units, the ones that are smaller, a little more budget friendly, those are getting anywhere from 70 to $80,000 a year. I mean, our price per key, price per door is a lot higher than a traditional hotel in most cases. I'm okay with that. I mean, the P&L justifies it, right? I mean, we're still super profitable. Our returns are significantly higher than almost any other hotel asset class or, or hotel type. And to be honest, it's less to manage operationally. I'd rather have 10 units doing as much revenue as a 50 room hotel. As an organization, we refuse to skimp. 
Whenever we do, it always bites us. It's like penny wise, pound foolish. We've found that if you invest in your product and you really try to make it the best of the best, super unique, you know, one of one, overriding the comp set, the returns are so high, especially in some of those final dollars that you're spending. It's like, don't skimp out on what the guest is seeing, feeling, touching, smelling, right? Like that's the stuff that you wanna spend money on. And the same is true for marketing, right? I mean, that's their first interaction with you. You want your content to be super strong. You want it to speak to them. You want it to evoke emotion. So many operators out there are focused on cost. They don't have a substantial marketing budget. You're able to separate yourself so significantly from the competition because so many more people are cost focused than revenue and profit focused. It's a differentiator. I believe in it wholeheartedly now. I didn't always, but Onera has kind of taught me that. And I've made some mistakes here. I've skimped here. I sourced some of the structures on site from China trying to save a buck. And we ended up spending probably more money than if we sourced locally, trying to retrofit them and labor, trying to figure out how to put them together. So every time I've tried to skimp, it's bit me. So now I just pay for quality, try to blow people away. And, you know, so far, so good. All right, folks, I'm back with an incredibly exciting announcement from our friends at Den. Well, you can purchase the digital plans for any of Den's unforgettable cabin designs, regardless of where you live or where you want to build. If you want to build in upstate New York or Austin, Den can actually build your cabin for you. Introducing Built By, a streamlined home building process with modern designs and transparent pricing. Simply browse the DEN website, select the cabin design that you want, and DEN will handle the rest. Yes, like all of the rest. How cool is that? I've met so many incredible folks in the hospitality space that use DEN designs for their own cabin builds. So it brings me much joy to announce that we've partnered with DEN to bring you an exclusive discount on all of their digital designs. And if you wanna be an early adopter of Built By, we can also provide you an exclusive discount on Built By. If you use the discount code BTS50 at checkout, you can get 50% off any of Den's digital designs. And if you want to build in upstate New York or the greater Austin area, reach out to the team at Den, tell them that you want to experiment with their built by service, and they'll give you an exclusive discount only available to Behind the Stays listeners. So head on over to denoutdoors.com. And even if you're not quite ready to build, go ahead and buy one of these designs for a future build because you're not gonna see a discount like this again, friends. Again, that's BTS50 for 50% off any digital design. In terms of market picking, we actually really like markets that have a lot of wealth around the market and a lot of driving destination traffic or fly-in, I mean, just a lot of tourists that have disposable income, they're used to spending money, but there is a significant shortage of high-end accommodation. So there's not a Four Seasons. There's not a, you know, there, there's not a Ritz. There's not these four and five star hotels. So when these folks come out, they're staying at the roadside motel. They would much rather be paying four times the price to stay at Onera or somewhere, you know, or the Four Seasons or the Ritz, right? But those hotels maybe aren't coming out here because the room count they don't think makes sense or it's a little bit more of a secondary market or whatever it may be. We actually love markets that have high disposable income and not enough four and five star accommodations. Direct bookings was always an afterthought for me. I mean, if you have a traditional short-term rental Airbnb portfolio, so many folks out there have tried to brand them and funnel bookings direct, you know, I think with mixed success. But something like Onera is so unique and different and kind of viral by nature that it sort of pushes you to, to try to have people book direct and really build a brand around that. And we have a unique value proposition. We're not just kind of any other Airbnb or STR. I didn't know that at the time. You know, when we launched, it was just Airbnb. And honestly, out the gate, we were doing great on Airbnb. We were 80 to 90% booked at every unit. Our ADR was still close to $500 a night, like out the gate. But the really cool part was when we figured out this whole direct booking strategy and leveraging Instagram. And I got to credit uh, this, this girl, Amanda, who had an account, SA Foodie, I actually think she worked with Isaac as well. She really helped get me going. You know, she kept hitting us up on Airbnb saying, hey, I got to stay at your place. I got to showcase you guys, maybe do a giveaway. And I was kind of like, yeah, 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 whatever. And, and finally relented because she was persistent and I figured, you know, why not? So we got a direct booking website up and running. She came out, shot some content, posted the giveaway. 
And I think we did like ten dollars to $15,000 on the initial post that she did. And then like a few weeks later, she was getting a new account up and running, Texas Explorer, which was her travel account. And we did another like ten dollars to $15,000. So we did somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty dollars to $30,000 in direct bookings on a comped stay. The returns were, were just remarkable through the roof. And that's what kind of tipped me off to working with influencers. We think a lot about Instagramable moments at Onera. One way we think about that is how many different cool amenities, whether they're communal or private to the unit, can we offer and provide. With the amount of different types of units we have, there's so many opportunities to create a ton of content. It's not like you're just constantly shooting the same thing, the same unit, the same room, which can get old and I think can be a challenge to create consistently engaging content two, three, four times a week. I learned a little bit from Onera Fredericksburg and some of these units here, like Monarch, for example, is amazing to shoot from the exterior and, and almost easy to photograph and make it look amazing and take videos from the exterior. Interior is a little more challenging. The layout, you can't get the full shot through like you get in Spyglass. I mean, Spyglass is a barrel, so you can take a shot you know, on one side of it and shoot the whole thing, get this amazing kind of rounded shape that shoots you out into a hot tub deck that's 15 feet suspended in the air. It's like really dramatic. And then Monarch, you can do the same thing from the exterior, but Spyglass is kind of challenging to shoot from the exterior. So we've thought about this as we expand and are building new units, really trying to maximize both, get these amazing interior shots, and then also this like epic, unique exterior shot as well. When I'm looking for a property for Onera or any landscape hotel, unique stay that's kind of landscape nature focused, I'm looking for views that are gonna blow people away, whether that's within a canopy or just hill country views for hundreds of miles. Water features, guests love water, whether that's a creek or amenities that we're adding later. And then being close to attractions, feeling kind of remote and tucked away, but still being very close proximity to a bustling Main Street or Town Square or a natural feature like Jacob's Well or Blue Hole in Wimberley, who is very close to our, our Wimberley property, property for own era. Kind of trying to have the best of both worlds, and again, we're limited staff, we don't have a restaurant. People being able to just walk out their door, hop in the car, or even walk, right, to go to a nice dinner or experience whatever the town has to offer is really big. The property in Wimberley, it, it really blew me away. I mean, the views that I saw there were the best views I'd seen in any piece of land in the Texas Hill Country. And my GC has grown up in the area, and he says it's the best views in Wimberley and might be some of the best views in the Texas Hill Country that are west facing. So we get these killer sunsets, right? Um, so I saw that and I was like, this is the one, right? This is what I've been looking for. And then there's an element of what is the land calling for? Tree houses make sense if you have nice big trees, right? They don't, a tree house wouldn't make sense really in a desert. I mean, there's other things that make sense. That's sort of an obvious example, but with the Wimberley property, I mean, we took it to another level where we had this beautiful hillside. We didn't want to just be throwing up, let's say, container homes or modern boxes on the side of a hill. One of our unit types is called the greenhouse, and we're gonna have vegetated rooftop decks that basically help it blend into the hillside. So there's an element of being aesthetically pleasing for the community, obviously for the guests as well. Drone shots are gonna be killer, yeah. but the land really called for that. I think that you really wanna to try to do something that inspires you. I think if you're inspired by the stay that you're creating, you can sell it, whether that's to the bank or to your consumer and guests later on. And in order to inspire yourself and I think guests, build fewer, better units. That could just be one. It doesn't have to be 10 or 15. You can get there later. I mean, look at Devin with Pacific Vin, right? He's got a million followers for one cabin. That's super dope. By doing that and, and creating a brand and an audience, you can create more later. You can show your success with that one unit, you know, then you can build more of those. I mean, if it's me, I'd much rather have one, two, three, four units producing the same revenue that maybe somebody that has 10 or 15. It's less work, less operational headache. If we deliver this hospitality experience that nobody else is delivering, it's going to be successful. You know, we have to be realistic about the budget and things like that, which some Sometimes isn't fun, but I still think that you know we can be the best in some of these markets, and, and that's you know we've I think we've proven that with Onera Fredericksburg, and and I think we'll continue to do that with Wimberley. 
Thanks for tuning into this episode of the next generation of hospitality entrepreneurs. If you're looking for more stories of hospitality entrepreneurs building incredible Airbnbs like the ones at Onera, be sure to check out Behind the Stays wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. And if you're looking to travel to a unique Airbnb, be sure to check out Sponstaneous. Sponstaneous brings you the best last minute deals and upcoming steals on unique stays directly to your inbox twice a week.